Hello, my dear friends. This is Prashant Mamani here, and I welcome all of you in today's geography lecture. As you can see on the screen, this lecture is a continuous series of our tour to different continents. So far, we have seen Asia, then we moved towards Africa. After that, we have gone through North America. And today we are going to travel to South America. Right, that's the reason why you have South America here. In continents, we are going to learn today South America. After that, we are going to take a tour of Europe, and then Australia, and last would be last destination would be Antarctica. So let's start with South America. Right, so just like our other lectures, what are the things that you can observe from the physical map of South America? Now I haven't uh, presented a political map of uh, South America in front of you because now I would like you guys to open your atlas book in front of you so that you develop uh, not a, not only a habit but it becomes a ritual of yours uh, every time if you are studying any place may it be a country may it be a continent may it be a river you name it you should open your atlas book and you should go through all the different types of maps that are given there say for example if, if we are learning south america today then what you should do is open the physical map as if you are here with me in the lecture then you should open the physical map of south uh, south america once you are done with a uh, physical map you should go through the political map of south america you should locate the biggest country in south america you should also try to locate the smallest country in South America. Apart from that, there are other things. Like, you know, we go through equator, we find if there is Tropic of Cancer passing through it, or Tropic of Capricorn, right, etc, etc. So these are the things you should look at. As I keep on telling you guys, and I will keep on hammering this thing, that my whole intention is to not provide you with spoon feeding. My aim here is that you guys develop a thorough understanding of uh, all the subjects that we are going to study. You should be able to relate all the subjects with each other. And once you are able to do this, you yourself will find a sort of intrinsic satisfaction with your studies you will for the first time you will realize that uh, you have gained something in the context of knowledge you'd be able to touch it you would be able to feel it once you start interrelating things with each other and this is my whole approach to help you uh, develop the interdisciplinary approach for civil services examination it will be helpful for other competitive exams as well and if you are not preparing for competitive exam or if you are a, a, a kid or if you are a parent of a child uh, who is going in a school then it would be helpful for you as well if you are uh, uh, spending some time after the education of your uh, children so th in, in, in this effort of mine my whole try is to uh, go a bit out of box and present you things in a new format. So let's go ahead with this thing. Now first of all what I can see is I can see two different ocean on the map. The one is South Atlantic Ocean, the other one is South Pacific Ocean, right? Now judging from our previous lecture the first thing I can tell about South Atlantic and South Pacific is that it is below equator that is zero degree right everything that is below equator is southern hemisphere 
everything above it is of course northern hemisphere so I'm sure that these two places are in southern hemisphere the other thing I can notice is I am if you go through this one this uh, is a small scale chart available here the dark blue represents the deepest right something around 6500 meter deep and if you see here this uh, snowy color represents the height of 4000 meter and then you have different um, heights altitude presented here in different shades of color so if I observe this dark color over here I can say that this is going to be a mountain range isn't it I can see it right from the northern side of South America all the way to the southern tip of South America this is Andes mountain range now remember the difference between a mountain and a mountain range if you have two or three mountains in a line then you can call it a couple of mountains right but if you have a continuous chain of mountain right running for kilometers and kilometers then that is known as a mountain range that is the reason why you see many of the cars like you know a famous uh, car known as Range Rover and it's an SUV sports utility vehicle one of the reason why they have chose this name is it describes its ability to uh, uh, to rover over a range of mountains right it can go to many mountains that's what the company is trying to project we are not going in deep detail but the reason the mountain range this is the main reason why you use the word range that is known as mountain range right so I have Atlantic Ocean over here I have Pacific Ocean over here what else you can see from this map can't you see the rivers right this is the mouth of Amazon now if this is the mouth of Amazon that means Amazon is not originating from here this is the point where Amazon finally meets an ocean that means Amazon starts from here somewhere isn't it and you have a mountain range here so naturally it is originating somewhere from here but look at the size of Amazon we this is not a country we are looking at this is a continent and observe the size of this river Amazon it is passing through so many countries you will find uh, parts of Colombia parts of Peru uh, Venezuela uh, Guyana right uh, then you have this whole big area of Brazil right part of uh, Bolivia as well right of course it, Amazon and its uh, tributaries everything is included that's uh, Amazon basin that's the reason you find here Amazon basin this is a Amazon river system in which you have so many other rivers as well associated with Amazon apart from that there are other things that I will leave it to yourself to do it because I have gone through in the minute uh, most possible details in uh, uh, when we were studying Asia when we were studying uh, Africa and when we were studying North America so other things you have to do it for yourself now I will quickly move on other things regarding South America it is fourth largest continent major part of South America is in southern hemisphere now locate a country called Ecuador right it is on the western side of or to be specific it's going to be on the western no, uh, northwest side of South America you'll find equator is passing through uh, this country uh, which is uh, Ecuador from here somewhere and then it is going through Bolivia and from Bolivia it is entering Brazil and from Brazil it is entering into South Atlantic Ocean 
Right, friends? Then the other thing which we can say regarding South America is that it is completely in the Western Hemisphere because you won't find prime meridian passing through it. Right? So it is completely in Western. It is in the Western side of prime meridian. Zero degree longitude. It is in the Western side of zero degree longitude. So it is completely in Western Hemisphere. Two major oceans, right? Pacific in the western side and South Atlantic or Atlantic Ocean in eastern side. Tropic of Equator and the other tropical line that passes through this continent is Tropic of Cancer. So far it has been only African continent and it is only African continent in which you find all three uh, lines of these tropics right one uh, on the northern side you find cancer equator and in the southern bit you find capricorn as well but in south america you only find tropic of equator and tropic of cancer you don't find tropic of uh, sorry tropic of capricorn you don't find tropic of cancer because tropic of cancer is in the northern side uh, remember when we were learning about uh, north america we have located cuba and right above cuba you find Tropic of Cancer. Other thing is Andes Mountain which we have located already. Right, It is the longest mountain range of the world. Right, Longest. The reason it is longest because it starts all the way from uh, Colombia. It passes through Ecuador. Then you have Peru and parts of Bolivia and Chile and Argentina. All these countries. Right from the northern point of uh, South Africa, South America to the southern bit of South America you find this mountain range. This is Andes mountain range. This is the longest mountain range of the world. If you encounter a question like which is the highest mountain range, of course you won't find these things in UPSC. But when we will move ahead, when we will learn, when we will add things, when we learn uh, about uh, Mm, water cycle, how rains are working, etc., etc., right? Wind pattern and all these things. At that point of time, this mountain range, its height, its length, everything will start uh, becoming important. So, it is the longest mountain range. And when you encounter a question like which is the highest mountain range, then of course, you know it very well, it is Himalaya because you find all the highest peaks in Himalaya. Of course, Mount Everest is there, then you have Ketu and Kanchenjunga and there are many others as well. Amazon River. It is the largest river of the world. Right? It is not the longest, it is the largest river of the world. Longest river is Nile. It's in Africa. It starts somewhere in uh, Victoria Lake, uh, northern side of uh, Tanzania, and from Tanzania, it passes through many countries, right? Uganda, and you have South Sudan, Sudan, and uh, it passes through Egypt as well. And finally, uh, the mouth of uh, Nile meets in Mediterranean Sea. But it is not carrying as much as water as Amazon is carrying. That is the reason. It's just a longest river, but when you uh, see the size of volume of water that Amazon is carrying, then it is going to be uh, the largest river of the world. Then you have Amazon forest. It is also known as the lungs of the earth. Now, do you know why they are known as lungs of the earth? You know very well what trees do, right? They inhale carbon dioxide and they give out oxygen and what lungs do with our body it's a simple thing if they are known as lungs of the earth that means they are going to be the biggest forest isn't it moving on you also find Atacama desert now Atacama desert is the driest place on this earth now, why it is the driest place on the earth I told you already in our future add-ons on this lecture we are going to learn about these things and you would be um, surprised or you will be fascinated how things work in geography. It is very interesting. Trust me, it is very interesting. 
and if you observe the state of Kerala and uh, Chile you will find like they are a bit similar with each other right apart from that there are other many things that has been that has traveled from um, South America like say for example uh, do you know uh, potatoes right uh, the origin uh, the origin origination point of potatoes is Peru and then uh, Portuguese visited this place and then they finally uh, bought potatoes in India and there are other con other things as well like if you go to Peru you find a, a mountain known as Macha Puchri that means a, a tail of a fish and the word Macha Puchri is I'm sure it's not difficult for you to understand this because it is uh, coming from uh, one of the Indian languages right so there are many similarities there are many things that connects uh, Latin America, it is also known as Latin America, this place, South America and India. There are many things that are in common between India and South America. Right, now ring of fire. Now why I have added this thing? Because if we go through newspapers of uh, last 10 days, you find these things in your newspaper. Earthquake in Solomon Islands, California, Sumatra, that is part of Indonesia, and Japan. Now this place, like this was in, uh, I believe, in uh, 10th or t uh, 10th December, 10th December 2016's news. Uh, the same applies to this one. And I don't know the exact date of uh, an earthquake in Sumatra, but it was uh, in first or first or second week of December 2016. And the main reason why this area is affected with so many things, uh, so many earthquakes, is that you have ring of fire. This whole range is affected by volcanoes and earthquakes. Why? Of course, we are going to learn it in future. But here is your California. Here is your Andes mountain. You find uh, uh, rocky mountains over here. Everything has a relation in geography. And in future lectures, I will let you know why you find mountains over here, why you have the longest mountain range over here, why you find so many earthquakes taking place over here, why Atacama Desert, which is located somewhere here, is the driest place on the earth, why you have Amazon River, which has so much amount of water right so all these things we are going to discuss in future lecture the simple thing is that in equator the wind when you come to equator you find winds are coming from this side and then you have winds that are coming from this side they converge over here they travel this path and in between they have a wall of mountain so the clouds hit the mountains and all the water drops and everything they have rainfall over here and you have amazon river forming this side right so this is a small example for you so i'll keep it till here my dear friends i hope you have learned many things from this uh, lecture on south america uh, in our next lecture we are going to talk about europe and then we will move to australia and then antarctica do pass me your comments, right? Uh, thank you very much, all of you who have already passed uh, comments. Uh, in next lecture, I may also um, read out the names of the people who are uh, following my lecture and who are active members. I may also, um, and I may also come answer your questions if you have any specific questions in uh, future lectures. I'll keep it till here. Uh, you have a nice time. Bye for now.